Okay, in the last video we uh, got to this point where this is the uh, the 2N 30 55. This is the big pass transistor. So this is a this is the big path here from from our transformer our bridge re rectifier and everything to the output. So every all the magic is done with this one transistor. Any 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 change in voltage uh, is through this transistor here. And so we need some way of biasing that transistor. So this uh, resistor here just helps this thing turn off if needed. And then we need to turn it on though. How do we turn it on? Well, we're going to turn it on through another chain. We're going to turn it on through a 10 ohm resistor, through a, uh, another transistor here, and up to 12 volts. So we're going to have 12 volts come through here, and that will bias this transistor on and allow the, uh, allow the voltage to pass. So now we need to bias this transistor on, and we're going to do that with another transistor. So it looks the same. We have a 1K here. Make sure this guy can turn off. And now this transistor can feed this in and turn this one on, and this looks like a Darlington pair. So uh, that's what we have here. Now we need to turn this one on. <laughs> so how do we turn that one on? Well, we turn that one on through a diode and up to 12 volts. So now we have 12 volts going through here. So this 12 volts turns these guys on, and this 12 volt turns these guys on. Um, so it's a bit funny here. Why do we need these extra diodes in here? Uh, the uh, resistor would work just fine. Well, they want to make sure that we only have turning on, and um, so we want to be able to send voltage in the right direction. And we want to keep it from anything else happening down below. So that's kind of just a, a one-way valve here, just to make sure. And we'll get back to why there's a two-volt zener in here. I think I know why, but it's a bit strange. Um, so what's below that? The, our, our favorite circuit. We have the uh, uh, current and voltage op-amps, and they both can pull down. So this thing is normally on all the time until either the voltage is too big, and then it pulls down, or the current is too big and then it pulls down. And these guys are able to shut it off. Instead of the 12 volts being able to go through, they pull that 12 volts down and they don't allow that 12 volts to go through. And this is basically a wire or. You can either have this or this. Either one of them can pull down. So also called a wire or, a diode or. Um, so why the two volts? Well, what I think's going on is these op amps run at uh, plus and minus 12 volts. So when they go in their down direction, they're able to go down uh, to minus 12. But maybe to keep them in their linear range, maybe they're only going down to minus 10 or something, but they're going down to some voltage. Let's just say it's minus 12. Well, here we can only really pull down because the diode drop, but maybe we can really only pull down to 11 volts here. Um, and uh, minus 11 volts, I'm sorry, minus 12 volts, minus, minus 11 volts. And if we have a plus 12 volts, then maybe this can go positive, okay? Maybe this has the ability to go positive, even though these guys are pulling down. And by putting this Zener diode in here, it basically says, nope, this node can only get as big as 10 volts. We're going to drop 2 volts, and so our 12 volts turns into 10 volts here. So we only have a maximum of 10 volts here, and minus 12 volts can pull it all the way down. So I think that's why the, the, the Zener diode is in here, all right? So... Uh, how are we doing here on our big picture? Let's get out our, let's get out our marker here. Is that in the frame? I, my camera's up a bit too high. Okay, I think that's in frame. So now we understand all of this, all of this, all of that, all of that, all of that. I think we're basically done. So the weird things that is going on, and I have notes for them, is, uh, the 12 volts. See, I just don't think this is right. I think the schematic is wrong. I think this, I think this point here is needs to be connected to here. And um, then the V out plus and minus. Oh yeah, the V out. So the V out uh, is also going to be plus and minus. What's my note here? It says V out plus and minus in. So why is the plus? This one's negative and this one's not. I think that's fine. I think that's fine. So um, yeah, so I think we understand everything um, except for this one strange wire. It doesn't seem to, 
it doesn't seem to be drawn in the right spot. It should be uh, connected to this, to, uh, yeah, to this wire here. And probably, maybe even before, maybe even over to here, take out any voltage drops caused by that. So, so you might find that. You might find that uh, sometimes the schematic doesn't make sense, and you should you should use your own uh, you should your, use your own gut feel for whether that's really right or not. So, um, oh, we missed a, we missed a capacitor here. There's a capacitor here on this voltage node. That's just to make it stable. That's just to make it smooth it out so it doesn't fluctuate up and down. So I think we have uh, we understand everything in here now. Let me zoom out for the big picture here. So. My point wasn't, can we understand everything on the schematic? That wasn't the point of the video. The point of the video was, when given a brand new schematic, it might look daunting at the very beginning. It might just look like, oh my God, everything's going every which direction. I really don't know what's going on. You know, calm down, get, a, get some coffee, whatever, you know, tea. And there's, you know, just go through it piece by piece. Oh, okay, I understand this. Oh, that's what's going on. Oh yeah, this can never go above 12 volts, so it must be this thing over here, you know, and here's the output, okay. You know, just go through it. And a lot of times, um, like if you're repairing something, you don't need to know how the whole thing works. You might just have, have to know a couple things and figure out what's wrong, right? So if you say, ah, I can set the voltage, but I can't set the current, right? And then you can say, oh, current. Oh, I know the pieces that, that do the current. It's these things here. And so that's where I need to look. Maybe there's something wrong in here, right? And then you can go check for voltages and stuff and maybe get an oscilloscope and try to figure things out. But um, yeah, a lot of times you don't need to know, know the, the, the whole thing in detail. It's often good to know the whole thing in rough terms. Just to get an idea of it. Like, like it's very important to know, yeah, this is the voltage op amp. This is the current op amp. This is the voltage pot. This is the current pot, right? Get that kind of idea. These are the resistors that measure the current. This is the big one. So if you're not getting any voltage out, let's say the symptom is you're not getting any voltage out at all, right? And so you'd say, okay, uh, well, are we having, do we have any voltage out of the transformer? You know, you can measure the AC on the transformer. Yeah, you could measure the bridge rectifier. So you can measure, you could measure here and you could say, yep, you know, we've got 30 volts here. You know, 30 volts should be good. And then you say, well, the only other thing that could go wrong is this transistor here, right? This transistor could be bad or it might not be turning on, right? Maybe maybe one of these op, amp op amps died and it's always pulling down, right? It's it's always pulling down. And so the, never, the thing never, never has a chance to, uh, never th has a chance to, to work. So you could remove this diode or you could remove this diode. And now the thing should pass all the time at maximum and see if that works, right? So you can go through it and you can kind of troubleshoot it by knowing all the logical pieces. Um, and then if you need to, get in there with a the fine detail, like what is this component really, you know? Oh, it's a two and a half volt regulator. Oh, yeah, that one seems to be dead. I'm measuring 12 volts here. Uh, that can't be right. I need two and a half volts. Okay, well, I need to go get one of these uh, WL431s. Uh, well, I don't have one in my junk bin, but I do have a, uh, a three volt Zener diode, right? And you can say, well, could this circuit use a three volt Zener diode? If I had three volts here instead of two and a half volts, well, where are these voltages used? Well, they're just used in a divider string here and a divider string here, and both strings have a Cal adjustment. So yeah, three volts is probably just fine. It probably would work just fine with a three volt Zener diode in here. And you wouldn't need this fancy part, right? So you could do decision decisions like that. Um, anyway, I hope that helps. And I hope it gives people encouragement to uh, try to fix things or try to understand how something works, look at schematics. Um, and, uh, you know, don't be afraid that it's drawn funny. A lot of times they're drawn this way because they need to fit on the piece of paper. <laughs> they're not there to teach you. They're there to document it um, So for different reasons.